Christian and non-Christian paranormal investigators. They have two different views, and it seems as if neither of them can ever agree on anything. So what happens when a mainstream view of the paranormal crosses paths with the Christian view? <laughs> Something epic. This is Paratroop Radio. Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Paratruth Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And today we have on a special guest. Her name is Shanna Stoker. She is the co-owner and founder of The Ghoulish Garb, a shop dedicated to creating unique designs celebrating witchcraft and the macabre. She is an established practitioner of witchcraft whose love of tarot and all things grim inspired the idea of terror tarot, major arcana deck, and guidebook. She has a background in historical research and archival studies, theatrical performance, and artistic direction, as well as a passion for witchcraft, the paranormal, and literary lore, all of which helps inform her as she works with her phenomenally talented team in designing new products. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's go to the line with Shanna Stoker. Welcome to Paratruth Radio. We're happy to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. So uh, first things first, I mean, you have this company known as The Ghoulish Garb. Uh, I guess the first question that we really want to know is just what inspired this and why did you decide to run with it? Well, I've always been a little obsessed with things that are macabre and different and weird. And as I got older, uh, I got into the occult and um, I found out that an uncle of mine actually practiced witchcraft and he taught me a lot about it. And um, about 15 years old is when I kind of started entering my own practice with that. Um, but I've also had paranormal experiences since, I mean, for as long as I can remember. So they've been a really big part of who I am too. And I think that all is intertwined, the interests and the experiences. So um, when we, we knew that we wanted to start this business, my partner and I, we knew that we wanted to start a business rather because we were done with the nine to five grind, just couldn't do it anymore. And that's saying something because I had only been out of school for like two years at this point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, we knew that we weren't wanted to get into something print on demand, which we focused mainly on t-shirts at first. And we were trying to decide what niche should we get into. Um, and finally, I kind of reluctantly pitched the idea for something along the lines of the spooky witchy niche because it's very much a part of who I am but this was a little bit before it was like majorly ramping up on social media and like it wasn't quite hit it hadn't quite hit the explosive you know pop culture um point that it is at now so I was a little like I don't know if he's gonna go for this because it's not really his thing <laughs> um he was looking more into like video new type style stuff which we just we we didn't have the licensing for um but yeah I was a little nervous but he loved the idea and so we decided okay let's get a hundred different ideas for um designs that we can put on shirts and on merchandise and if we get a hundred ideas on paper then we know that this is something viable we can move forward with and that's enough work for like a good amount of time to get designs out so um we did that within like maybe a week I think it didn't take us long at all to get a hundred designs uh you know ideas thought up and um that's when we knew like okay okay, let's, let's go ahead and move forward with this and see what happens. And then, like I said, luckily, TikTok and witch talk and all this other stuff really started booming about that same time. Uh, the tarot craze happened about the same time that I started saying we should do tarot. It's, I don't know, it's really, it worked out really beautifully, fortuitously. <laughs> <laughs> well, so then you can honestly say that something was telling you that you needed to do this. Yeah, that's, I would say that. I definitely think, you know, my intuition is something uh, I try to hone with my witchcraft, um, but it, it just feels like it was the right time. It was the right, all of these different moving pieces had to fall into place for this business. And 
and we're on year three now and just thriving. And both my partner and I have been full time for a year. And like, we've got insurance for the business. And I mean, it's just, wow. that's when I knew I'd made it is when I could pay myself insurance through the business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you hit that certain point uh, that you can say, you know, this, this was the right move. I, I think that's, that's a good point that you can say, you know, this was, this was for yeah. me. Um, <laughs> So, you yeah. know, um, I had found you on TikTok and you, your video that caught me was, I, I'm a descendant of Bram Stoker. And I know that the, the ghoulish garb kind of plays into, you know, being in that spooky uh, family type setting, sort of. Um, so how, how far down the line descendant are you from Bram Stoker? So... Brown actually didn't have any direct descendants with the name of Stoker because he only had a daughter. Um, so of course the name didn't move on with her. I do believe from our research that we are related, my family specifically is related to his uncle di directly. Um, okay. So yeah, so his first uncle directly. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we've done. We've, what we've, we've, traced our personal like stoker line all the way back to ireland i can't remember the name of the town right now but it's near where brom um grew up and it was back in 1597 i think was the the farthest back that oh, we wow. found so far um and we know that our clan of the stokers went from a uh, move from ireland to virginia and we have evidence um that and letters that uh, Brom wrote while visiting family in Virginia. He actually even wrote part of Dracula, the novel, while he was visiting in Virginia. Um, and so at, after that point, I don't remember when, but it, it was probably, I think, the early 1900s that my personal family's little clan moved from Virginia all the way down to Washington County, Alabama, which has, I believe, like one stoplight today. So it's a very small town. Um, and then, you know, I, I ended up growing up in Mobile, Alabama, which is a bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of the little journey that my family took and it's just been knowledge that's been passed down through the generations. Um, that's just very kind of a, a proud point in my family history. Okay. That's super cool. And, and do you find that having that background, that name has helped, uh, push your business further along than you, than it might've gone without it? Well, that's actually why I wanted to wait until we were fully established before even talking about this. Um, because, you know, from the very beginning, we started this business because I genuinely do have just a, a great appreciation for weird occult things and witchcraft, right? So it's, it's just a core part of who I am. And it just so happens that I also happen to be related to Bram Stoker. But from the beginning, people who did know that about me were like, you have to like, you got to push this, it's going to be part of your brand, and it's going to help your business grow. And I just, I was, I thought about it a lot, because I just, it just didn't feel right to me. I knew it was something that I would want to talk about eventually. But I really wanted to make sure before kind of going public with it, you know, um, that the business could stand firm on its own two feet without the help of, of the name or the, the recognition or whatever that would come from that. Um, but it is something I'm really proud of. So I'm glad to talk about it now that, you know, we're on our third year. Like I said, we're thriving. We're just, we've hit all of our goals and exceeded them. And I'm just, I'm very confident that the business um, was already doing fine on its own. And, you know, so now any publicity that it gets is just supplementary and it's greatly appreciated. Um, but yeah, it, it was, it was a long process to get here. <laughs> I figured three years is okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny that you, you say that because I was, I was talking to my wife about your bio and I'm like, she doesn't even say anywhere in her bio that she's <laughs> descendant of Bram Stoker and she's like well she's really trying to make a name for herself not worry about the the Stoker name and I'm like that makes a lot of sense because you can either make the brand about the Stoker name or you can make it about what you're really interested in yeah and and you know as an artist which is first and foremost kind of what I what I see myself as more than an entrepreneur it's it's my it's an artist and to be able to um I wanted to make sure that my work was seen separately as something completely separate to be appreciated 
from Brahms work. I mean, it's totally different stuff. It just, right. again, it happens like we're, we're in the same sphere, which is cool. And I really love that. And it kind of feels like the, the macabre was, you know, in the family name or in the, in the bloodstream or whatever, but it's just, yeah, I really have been trying to humbly acknowledge the lineage. Um, and it's a great conversation starter, but right. I want the conversation mainly, you know, to be about the business and the community that the business serves and just, you know, the art. <laughs> right. Sure. Now, and have you connected with some of the other descendants of Stoker? You know, I know there's a few who've even been working on some of new versions or variants of, Drac of the Dracula book uh, in the background. Have you reached out to them and talked to them? And how's that yeah, go? Yeah, I, I think you're talking about Dacre. Mm -hmm, um, Dacre. Yeah, he's great. Um, we've talked a few times briefly. We're trying to, like, I haven't, gosh, I haven't spoken to him in like a month. Um, we're trying to connect all of our research so that we can kind of get because you know he has the whole family lineage on his side taken sure. care of and so I, I would like to connect our research and see where it all connects exactly um because I do I think he's also I think he's related to where I would be related to Brahms uncle I'm pretty sure he's related to Brahms nephew okay not sure but anyway yeah uh, I have we have reached out to each other we've talked um, we're just trying to hopefully get all of that synced up because I feel like that would be really cool. Um, and there's another one that I, there's another descendant, a couple of there that have messaged me since all of this came out. Um, somebody else sent somebody from a con that they met that was the descendant. So yeah, it's really cool to kind of meet. There's not really many of us. So it's cool right. to kind of see who they are and where they are. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, is somewhere down the line, we're probably all related to each other in one way or another. <laughs> but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I don't want to make the whole thing about about Brom, but um, the the one question I really wanted to ask you about it was, was there is there any stories about him um, having any type of paranormal connection, whether that's being a witch or having paranormal experiences or anything like that? You know, I've looked for those types of stories. I haven't really found any so far. It doesn't seem to me that he was personally engaged in anything paranormal or occult, um, more so just fascinated by it. But I don't know. I, you know, I haven't read his personal journals, so perhaps there might be something within there that we could find. Um, but no, so far, I haven't really found anything, anything like that. But at least he knew how to, <laughs> how to weave he sp a web, spun right? a tail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, jumping back uh, to your business. Uh, one thing that's highlighted is this terror tarot uh, that you came up with. Uh, what exactly is the terror tarot and how does that differ from other tarot cards? And uh, what was the inspiration behind that kind of artwork? I've loved Tara for a long time now. Um, back when I turned, or when I was 15, I told you I kind of started my journey with witchcraft. One of the first things that really like got me interested was tarot. My uncle did a tarot reading for me that not only was so incredibly poignant in the moment, but for years I have thought about because things that I was warned about or things that, um, came up in that reading have stuck and have been shown proven and it's been absolutely it's just been wonderful to, to see that unfold and um it was just so spot on I just I remember being so taken aback by how spot on it was so I've always really loved tarot uh I, I was so overwhelmed by it though for such a long time because it's I mean there's it's really <laughs> there's 78 cards I think 56 minor arcana and 22 major arcana and, um, you know, you're just supposed to like memorize it all, right? You're supposed to <laughs> just know what it is when you look at it, but it's taken a long time. So it took a long time really until I started making the designs myself for me to feel comfortable enough to like do readings for other people mm -hmm. <laughs> because I was doing so much research just for the designs. So we based all of our tarot designs off of the um, Ryder Smith weight deck, which I believe came out in 1927. Uh, and it is 
basically the beginning of like the the essential tarot like if you're if you're just looking for a tarot deck to learn from or that's going to classically just keep you going and nothing too fancy or niche about it but it's just the original tarot deck you're going to go for that one and i i've always worked with that deck and it's um one where the symbolism is really it's very telling and it works very easily for my eye and for my mind to associate the symbolism with the meanings of the card and um so whenever we decided to make tarot designs, I really wanted to focus on trying to, yes, put a twist on the symbolism from Ryder Smith Waite, but to still focus on that same story, that same, you know, the points being made within the artwork. And um, it actually started because I was into tarot and I was like, okay, I've really been into the goddess Hecate lately. Let's maybe we can do a tarot design with Hecate. And so we, uh, I, I looked at all of the major arcana cause I knew it wanted to be one of them. And I was like, okay, which one of these cards fits with her story? She is a goddess of the moon. She is, you know, she's got a lot of different things that she's a part of, but also, um, the fact that she's in three different forms and she's like, it's all about transformation. So I decided to go with the moon card, uh, which is also about transformation and just, it fit perfectly for her story. And, um, that, got it was so well received that we were like okay we'll wait on the goddesses which we are working on now let's wait on that because our name is the ghoulish garb like let's do something spooky so we decided to go ahead and start doing the halloween stuff and um we were releasing the designs without telling anybody that we were planning on actually making a deck so every couple of weeks we'd release a new design on all of our merch and soon after the first or second design we started getting emails and messages every day where's the deck that this goes to? I need this deck. Like, this is incredible. I need this deck. <laughs> and so we were like, okay, it's coming. Just like, keep an eye out, follow us on social media. It's going to be a while. Um, and it's been so well received. And we just released the shadow edition, which is the black and white version of it. Uh, so that's great. Now we're working on the goddess deck. And then after that, we're going to expand to the minor arcana. It's a whirlwind of projects ahead of us, but it's exciting. Isn't that the case for any artist, though? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just glad that we have the resources to have projects lined up for years. So right. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful. <laughs> I love it. And I genuinely do. My partner and I really enjoy designing these cards. So it's 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 fun. Yeah, I, I've been into tarot since I was a teenager, too. Um, something that should not have gotten me into the paranormal was the Ouija board, but it kind of paved the way <laughs> for all the other different things. Uh, but I've always enjoyed the artwork of the tarot. It doesn't matter if I buy the deck or not, um, or use it or not, but um, it's always the artwork that calls to me if I'm going to yeah. buy a deck. Um, and one, the one that I just recently bought and that I've been using is it's all skeletons and it's artwork by this particular person, um, in Fargo, North Dakota. And I love it. It is amazing. The artwork, um, I've shown Eric some of the other ones that draw my attention. One of them that he would love is the Alice in Wonderland deck, which I thought oh, was I love awesome. Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> and so Something that not a whole lot of people understand, and you can expand on this for your deck, is the tarot is the story of the fool go making his journey through the world. So how did that play into your deck? Did you try and stick to the very simple story, or were you expanding more with, with that artwork? We did expand a bit more because we knew that we wanted each piece to be able to stand on its own. Whereas typically if you're designing for a tarot deck and you're not also designing for merch, then designing that story to be in line, it totally makes sense. And I really love that idea. Um, but for us, you know, like I said, each design was going to have to stand on its own two feet as a tapestry or a shirt. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that it didn't feel disjointed when you saw them individually. Plus, I wanted to try to, to put in as, as many different characters as we could. So we have Dracula and we have um, the Hierophant who is Cthulhu and we have the Headless Horseman as Death. Um, we've got a beautiful, stunningly 
creepy siren as the star. And it's just each each individual character for me is so powerful and tells their story so beautifully. So no, if you've lined them all up, it won't be quite the same as like seeing that story being told in Rider Waite. But the for me, what connects it all is you'll see imagery that is, you know, maybe the same green river, the river Styx that you see in the Hermit, because we have Charon um, as the Hermit. So the river Styx there, that green murky water is also in death. It's the river behind her, behind them, or it's in the Empress. You see the river there. Um, instead of the towers of the traditional Rider Waite Major Arcana, we have these old decrepit, you know, kind of... Um, twisted trees in the background and so like and the way that the moon and the clouds so there's lots of things that tie in all of the scenery and the backgrounds so that at least it, you're getting this world being created but all these characters are telling their own story within the world okay okay now when it comes to your witchcraft I, i'm sure it goes beyond just tarot uh so what do you identify as in, in terms of your witchcraft you know, I, I guess I would have to say eclectic witch, uh, okay. which I know is kind of like a cop out, right? But <laughs> honestly, like I, I like to, I don't really like boxes, especially with things like witchcraft, which is totally fine. Uh, because I know a lot of people who very specifically have like, they are hedge witches, or they are kitchen witches or whatever. And um, for me, I like a little bit of everything. I am my personal beliefs, uh, I don't really worship any deities. I don't really work with any deities. Um, I grew up Christian. So, and I always had a very spiritual bond with what I grew up believing, what you're calling God. And so for me, the term God is still often used in my language, but usually I'll use things like the universe or whatever. And it's just um, more about this ever present energy that's constantly around you and in everything. And and I also believe in animism, which is kind of a part of that, um, which is the belief that everything essentially has a spirit and an energy. So animals and trees and all that kind of stuff. And it's not to say, you know, that can be taken radically, which is not my, <laughs> my personal belief. But, you know, I just I do believe I do believe that as we learned in science, um, you know, no matter and energy can be created nor destroyed. And I think that some energy people when we die that energy is transferred into something else right or perhaps it stays behind as a paranormal entity you know there's lots of different things about oh well that's fine anyway there's lots of different um ways to think about that but yeah i i, I forgot where we were going with this i'm sorry my, <laughs> my light fell <laughs> i have adhd well, so you'll have to forgive me <laughs> i think that it pretty much explains what what Eric was asking, so that's yeah. Funny. Yeah, you were asking what kind of witch I am. Yeah, right. yeah, eclectic. <laughs> Short answer. Cut out the rest. Well, the one thing that we love is rabbit trails on this show, so that's totally. Okay. Oh well, then you'll love me because that's all I do. <laughs> I just get talking and forget what point I was trying to make. Like I said, I have severe ADHD, so it it happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But that doesn't affect so, uh, your artwork in the business, right? It makes me better at art. <laughs> okay. Good, good. <laughs> you concentrate yeah, on one business, specific thing. thing <laughs> yes. And then I like hyper focus when I'm, I'm like writing emails and stuff. And next thing I know, it's been eight hours and I haven't eaten. Uh, yeah. No, I, I hyper focus a lot on work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so something, you know, I'm not, I'm not a witch. Eric's not a witch. So something I really wanted people to explain for this time of year as, as a witch is what, what does that mean to you as a witch? Is there a specific um, meaning for witches for, for the fall equinox? Absolutely. So Halloween, obviously uh, we usually witches who practice the, who actually work with the Sabbaths, which not every witch does. Um, it's a kind of a Wiccan thing. It's really a pagan thing. And I do consider myself pagan. So anyway, but Samhain, Samhain is the holiday that falls on Halloween. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, you know, with Beltane as well. It's, it's the supposedly, you know, where the veil between the worlds is the thinnest. So communication mm -hmm. with the other side or with beings who are you know, paranormal entities um, is supposedly much easier. Now, 
as I've said, I've had paranormal experiences my entire life. So I've never really noticed an uptick. <laughs> it's just kind of been constant. Um, but I definitely, I think that's a nice belief, but it's also the, it's the beginning of the, or it's the new year for the Wiccan calendar, basically, or for the witch okay. calendar. Um, cause I'm not Wiccan, but you know, I don't know mm. if you, the diff, a lot of people don't understand that like, Wicca, Wicca is a religion and right. while all Wiccans are witches, not all witches are Wiccan, you know, like I said, my uncle, who's a witch practices Judaism. I've got friends who are Satanists and witches and, and Christians and witches. And, you know, it's, you don't have to have a religion. You can, it's just kind of one of those things you can mix right. and match your witchcraft. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I, I really love Samhain. I've had some beautiful experiences and I usually try to make it, uh, for me, it's not as much, it's not like a, a party holiday. Like it, it used to be. It's, um, for me, very reflective, you know, cause it's like the new year. It's about forthcoming change and about, you know, accepting change to make new things whole and, and to bring new growth. Um, and about looking back on the, the year and looking back on what you had, what you did grow, what you reaped, right? Like the harvest and seeing it's very much for me, a much better new year than actual new year's is because it, it just makes more symbolism, symbolic sense to me to be looking back at this time of year of what you've, what you've sown and what you've harvested. And now moving forward, you're going to have the frost and you're going to have time for reflection. And then as we get into spring, we're going to take on new projects and we're going to focus on bringing about new things and, and reinstilling those, you know, manifestations that we've been working on. So it's, I really like that the, um, the Sabbaths and the, the wheel of the year with all of the, <laughs> all of the Sabbaths and holidays really takes into account that seasonal symbolism. So I love Samhain. It's my favorite. Yeah. I think I, for, you know, for our part, Justin and I, we've, you know, growing up, obviously it's always been a fun holiday. Yeah. Kids growing, you know, going trick or treating, then it got into just hanging out and drinking and so on and so forth. <laughs> And then as we got into the paranormal and, you know, we both got into it based on our own experiences. Um, it, Samhain and just Halloween in general, October in general, takes on a completely different meaning. You know, we're both sensitives. Uh, and so there's like this time of year where our senses are heightened in the paranormal and the spiritual yeah. uh, realms, you know, it's, it's, I know like on Halloween night, uh, when I am just hanging out by the bonfire, you know, taking a sip of something warm, most likely whiskey, but you know, it depends. Uh, it's just really embracing that moment, you know, feeling, absorbing that spiritual energy that does exist that night. And, uh, you know, it's kind of fun watching everybody go and you know, play the games and trick or treat and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. but, it, but, but it's kind of cool to, to know and, and realize that there's so much deeper meaning uh, behind that night. You know, it's a good feeling. Yeah, it is a good feeling. It is. It, it does. It changes the color of it you know, and it is, it's still so good to see the secular side of things and to see the, the party you know, or the trick or treat side of things. Cause mm -hmm. I grew up doing all of that. And I loved Halloween in that way. So very much before I ever became a witch, you know? Um, but yeah, just being a witch and, and being more spiritual and connected to the spiritual side of things, uh, or the paranormal side of things, it does, it changes it. And it makes it it's for me. That's why I, that's one of the reasons I've started kind of staying in for Halloween because it's, it's almost like, oh, it's my little cozy holiday. You know, it's just, I'm going to, I'm going to go talk to some ghosts tonight and like, you know, make some yeah. soul cakes and just have a chill evening by myself with the paranormal. It's great. So um, you had mentioned your, your uncle that kind of got you into this. Is this kind of a bonding time for you guys? Yeah, it definitely was, especially when I was growing up. Um, well, he and I, he lived in Auburn, which is about four hours from where I grew up. That's where my whole dad's side of the family, the Stokers lived. So I visited them when I could, but you know, it was usually months in between visits. And, um, but yeah, we, even now, like he, so he's incredibly talented. He's an incredibly talented artist. He, um, he does everything like genuinely you can give him any medium and he will kill it. Uh, he's just, he's incredible. And I really look up to him as an artist and as a crafter, just a maker. Um, but yeah, we are always sending like 
you know, little videos or TikToks or pictures or whatever of, of look at this Halloween set or look at these, this makeup or look at this. Um, oh, he made me, oh man, I wish I had it with me right now. He made me a full scale flying broom, you know, flying broom. Um, <laughs> like he did, he got this old limb and made the handle and then like wove it. And, but he inside, inside of the actual broom under the bristles, he put, he found this old, um, it was a witchcraft book that he had found from like the 1600s or something. It was, you know, it had all these old spells in it and he found one for flight and he did the spell and like wrote it up and everything and put it in, in the, you know, in the, um, <laughs> broom. And it's just, it's just a beautiful keepsake that like, it just is so interesting and unique and I have this gorgeous broom in the corner now of my living room and and um I'm gonna hang it eventually because my cat keeps trying to eat the bristles but <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean it's just yeah we do we really bond over all of this kind of stuff he's he's actually been working on um designs for like a creepy monster I don't know he's working on a story or something and he recently showed me those designs it was absolutely gorgeous well gorgeous in a very disgusting way but gorgeous <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, it's a big thing for us. Is that a that's a it's a weird thing that that's a thing. Gorgeous in a very disgusting way. <laughs> well, right? I mean, it's weird. Isn't that what goth people do? Right. You look at the the beauty in the darkness, the beauty in the ugly, right? You find the beauty where you can. Yeah. <laughs> but this is also coming from a guy that does horror movies on the side. So, <laughs> so you get it. You get it. I get yeah. it. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> did you have any other questions eric uh, i do not actually all right so last and final question for you shanna because we are getting to about the halfway market and that's where we usually let our guests go is where can everybody find you find the ghoulish garb all that good stuff so the ghoulish garb we are on etsy ebay and amazon i would recommend going to etsy first that's where most of our clients co go and it's just kind of an easier platform, but I love them all. Um, I do the customer service for all three accounts. So if you have a question, please reach out to me on any of those, or you can email me at the ghoulish gal at gmail.com or support at the ghoulish garb.com. Either one of those, you'll be able to contact me. I'm very easy to get because it's just me and my partner. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I recommend going on Etsy. And if you want to follow me on social media, my TikTok is at the underscore ghoulish underscore gal. And for Instagram, the business is at the underscore ghoulish underscore garb. So that should be it. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on Paratruth Radio. Thank you for having me. This was great. All right, folks. That was Shanna Stoker, owner of the Ghoulish Garb, as well as, obviously, as we talked about, descendant from the Stokers that Bram, Bram, Bram Stoker uh, is related to. So make sure you check her out. Um, she had mentioned all the places where you can find her, but we also will have the um, all the information on our website, which is paratruth.com now. Um, we will talk about all of that and something that's coming up for Paratruth Radio uh, right after the break. You'll hear Eric's random fact of the day, a quick commercial, and we will be right back. Now, Eric's random fact of the day. To infinity and beyond is a really well-known quote from a very beloved space adventurer named Buzz Lightyear. However, did you know that that wasn't his original name? According to BuzzFeed.com, early in the film development process, his original name was Lunar Larry. However, after some serious consideration, his name was changed to Buzz Lightyear to honor the real-life astronaut Buzz Aldrin. This was Eric's random back to the day. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Brooke Haley Martin. And I'm Erin Skrback. And we have a little web series called Audition, Audition Life. Life. Inspired by true events, our series focuses on all the things that could potentially go wrong in an audition. And trust me, what can go wrong will. You can watch the series by going on www.auditionlifetheseries.com or by following us on the Instagram handle at Audition Life the Series. Break, Break a, a leg. leg! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And we just got off the line with Shana Stoker. I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed that interview. It was a fun interview. We got to talk mm, about more than yeah. just one or two things. You know, it, it was good. Um, another way to kick off our Halloween season. You know, last week we did our own thing. This week we had her on. We've got several more guests lined up throughout the coming weeks. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's it's really cool when we have people on who who created their own independent businesses, uh, mm-hmm. especially that are based within the paranormal the scary, the, the macabre, you know, uh, mm. and we don't have that very often, but we do have, or have had a number of individuals do that. Uh, it, it's really fun, you know, to see what these people can create, uh, and put more or less out of nowhere, you know, it, it's a very creative thing. And to see the ideas they come up with and how that progresses, uh, throughout the years uh, is just really cool. Oh yeah. I mean, and, that's kind of why I wanted to bring up the point about the name because I, I'm sure if people knew that she was directly related or somewhat directly related to Bra- Bram Stoker, it would have created an influx on a completely different scale and for the wrong reasons because she wasn't creating the business because she was a stoker. She was creating the business because this is really what she wanted to do. Sure. So. So as I announced, and we announced last week, um, we do have a new website, paratruth.com. Um, awesome. If you're a podcaster and you listen to the show, you should check out podpage.com. Um, makes things so easy. But check out paratruth.com and uh, tell us what you think. Um, you can leave voicemails for us that we can play on air, which... Eric, I don't know if you saw, but we have one. Um, so we're yep, going to play that here. Um, and you can review or, or check out all of the reviews for Paratruth Radio that were on iTunes or on Pod Chaser. Pod, yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> so too many pod uh, pages. Yo, I, um, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah check it out uh we're gonna play the voicemail here really quick and then uh we'll have a quick chat because eric also was looking at reading the blog that i just posted there um so that's another thing that is new to paratruth kind of new we've done a blog here and there on the old website but this is a little more directly connected so i'm gonna play the voicemail um and we'll do some chatting about the blog but uh, here's the voicemail. Hey, Justin, and Eric, how are you guys? This is a very cool website. Thanks so much for sharing. Looking forward to listening to more of your podcasts. Again, cool website. God bless. Bye. And that was our good friend, Jerry. So, Jerry, thank you so much for leaving the first voicemail for our, our paratruth.com. Uh, if you want to hear your voice on air, if you have something specific you want to tell us, uh, have us talk about, reach out via voicemail. Sometimes it's a little easier to tell how something is b- being told to us by voice rather than text. So uh, that's why I really like this. In terms feature. of context. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Right. Um, so I had posted a blog. Um, can the mind survive immortality? And I had basically just kind of giving my opinion. I didn't give any real fact or anything or any websites that I've looked at or any books that I've read that kind of have shaped what I think about it. But um, what were your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it's an interesting concept, uh, the idea of the human mind surviving immortality, because we're not talking about the body. Uh, we're talking about placing the mind or at least the conscience into what I would imagine to be some sort of machine that would then right. hold on to it for an eternal uh, amount of time. 
Um, now, the thing that brings up or raises questions to me is, <clears throat> well, one, what is the exact point of allowing the mind uh, to live on Im Im immortally? Uh, now, I know that in your blog, you mentioned uh, just a quick mention that some of us have so much that we want to do and accomplish in life, but don't always have the opportunity to do so, because regardless if you live until you're 30 or you live until you're 100, time is short, period, right. and you don't always get a chance to do it. Now, the question that that raises, though, is if our mind is in uh, in a mortal state via technology, how do we continue to accomplish those goals without the without a body uh, to be able to actually do those things? Uh, and the only thing I can think of off offhand is, I mean, obviously this is very sci-fi esque, uh, right. and so perhaps placing our conscious or mind into a robotic uh, type of body, I guess, right? Something that like an android. We can Right, like an Android, that we can move with our own mind, with the brain, but not necessarily, you know, I feel like you'd be void of certain things. Obviously, you wouldn't have feeling uh, in terms of touch, no sense of smell necessarily. Hearing would be different by far. Uh, but then we also have to consider one other thing is if we're transferring our consciousness, how is that done and what does that look like? Because we're not literally taking the brain and placing it somewhere. Because let's face it, uh, the brain is just like our bodies. It ages, it gets old, it expires. So we'd have to take whatever the consciousness is, whatever that is. I mean, and there's plenty up to debate as to what that is and what that looks like oh, right. and figure out how right. to extract it and place it into some sort of technology that would then convert it, I guess, into some sort of digital DNA, uh, allowing us to continue to live that life. And of course, in sci-fi, it's all it's all out there. We've seen it in movies, you know, right. television shows. But of course, they skip the most important aspects of it as to how that technology was developed and what is the process behind it all happening. Yeah. Unfortunately, we just see the oh, we pull this, click it in there, boom. The reality <laughs> doesn't quite work that way that I know of. But you know, I I think it's a really interesting thing though, for sure. You know, I, I think it'd be kind of cool. Um. I guess the main thing is, though, what happens in the end, if this, let's say this is real or could be real at some point in the future, you accomplish everything that you could possibly want to accomplish. You no longer want the immortality, then what happens? And is there any type of political uh, or even, um, I, I, I don't know, like it, it, it could, would it be wrong to, eliminate or destroy the consciousness once you no longer want to be there you know what i mean like is there right it, it would be technically speaking creating or, or uh committing suicide because if you don't want right. to be there anymore could you turn your hard drive whatever whatever the the brain would be at at that particular stage off and it have no ramifications is basically what you're pointing at right 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 well and this is all speculative of course but um i i think one of the the coolest explanations in fiction uh there's two specific ones um if any of you have ever listened to the baba verse series on um audible uh it talks about scanning the brain, uh, somebody being cryogenically frozen, specifically their head in the beginning of the series. But then they thaw the head and do a brain scan of some kind. Now, granted, it's a dead brain. Um, I understand that. So how would you really map the brain with a scan? No idea. Um, the other one that I really liked the explanation for was in the movie Chappie. If you've never seen the movie Chappie, ch check that one out. And um, they explain it as, again, scanning the brain, but scanning a live brain. Um, so it catches all synapses, all, all function of the brain as you're alive, as it would be firing today, um, and then transfers that to a mechanical body. So some people have kind of explained it but at the same time in 
both of those particular pieces of fiction, they never explain. We still don't know what consciousness is. We don't even know what the soul is, technically speaking. Um, We have our religious explanations. We have scientific explanations. But it's still not broken down to the understanding of what the human brain can comprehend. But those two particularly were really well done in the explanation. Um, The only reason I brought this up is I had brought up a... Um, a, a poll in our Facebook group and on our social media pages and just kind of wanted to get the idea. And it was interesting that it was pretty well split from yes, no, I don't know. And interestingly enough, after saying I don't know myself, I started to thinking about it. And if given the option, I would probably say yes. But if it got to that point where I had to make that decision, I would probably fight with it for sure. Okay. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't really know because I think for something like this, at least for me, you, you kind of have to, there's no way of knowing because uh, for me, you're looking at a, a physical conscious thing compared to a spiritual thing and can the two be separated right. unless the right. conscious and the spirit are one and the same. Uh, and if that's the case, if they are two separate things, can one actually actually exist without the other, right? Because there's right. this uh, this idea, this belief, uh, it, it, not just in scripture, but in various uh, holy texts around the world, various religions, that when we go into heaven or hell, we would be very aware of it. We would know what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like. Uh, we'd be very well, we would very much have our conscious with, with us. Uh, so can they be separated? And if you don't, how does that, how does that work? You know, like, does your spirit then go into this machine? Are you stuck in it? You know, like right now we know with the paranormal, there's, we believe that there's ghosts based on evidence, human spirits or otherwise walking the earth on another plane. Well, if we were to take that conscious of that spiritual, of that spirit, that being and place it into a machine, is it just trapped there? Is it a cage? Uh, you know, and I, I think there's just so many, so many intricate details uh, that we just don't know that could tell us what is right, what is wrong, what is maybe going too far uh, with some type of technology that would be capable of of uh, holding onto this, you know, this consciousness, allowing us to live this immortal life. Right. There's there's a lot of ramifications that come with this decision so right that that's why i was kind of curious people's thoughts too because um i mean something that shapes our our decision is our religious or spiritual beliefs Mm. um i mean it's kind of different for somebody that is say an atheist that believes nothing happens when we die we just we just die um or the the people that are more scientifically based thinking and again you kind of run into similar things with that because there are are moral things that you have to fight with when you're thinking about this so it was just an interesting concept i when it came down to it would i make that decision to put my consciousness into a robotic body or some type of computer system. I can't say for sure until I got to that point. I, at this particular point, would like to, because as I had said in the blog, there's so many things that we as humans want to do in our lifetimes and just don't get the chance to because so many things take up our time that we end up losing a lot of that. So, Right. But interesting idea either way especially for fiction science fiction right so um so we've been talking for several weeks now about something big coming for paratruth radio and eric i'm gonna let you tell everybody what's going on for paratruth radio other than of course we're gonna be at scarefest right we are gonna be at scarefest so (laughs) 
if you're if you're not yet going, you should do it. Um, yeah. It's actually really funny because somebody on on a group Facebook group that I'm on had mentioned in the comments uh, comments that he's going to be meeting. Um, well, I just drew a blank all of a sudden. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, of the Evil Dead, Bruce Campbell. Right. Bruce Campbell. He's going to be meeting Bruce Campbell in a couple of weeks, and I was like. I know where you're meeting him at if it's in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so I responded and he never responded back. To come, come meet us, but nothing. Um, anyway. So yeah, big news. And that news is that finally we're going to share it. Uh, Justin and I have been, we, we reached or someone reached out to us and we have officially signed a contract to join a network uh, called Evergreen Podcasts uh, with their sister company that they're launching called Killer Podcasts. And it is a paranormal uh, slash um, murder mystery or kill, uh, murder podcast. Uh, what? Let's say website, but podcast, I guess. How many times can you say podcast in a sentence? Hey. <laughs> Two. I, um, I think they're kind of mixing in conspiracy in with that yeah. too. I mean, when you're talking paranormal, you kind of do anyways, but sure, sure. And so, you know, it, it's really exciting. We had to keep it under wraps. Uh, we signed the contract probably five weeks ago now, around ish. Um, you know, we've been working on various details as part of the reason we have the new website up, which is it in my opinion, a phenomenal website compared to what we've had in the past. Uh, mm. so there's going to be a lot more coming to you guys too through the website. Um, it, it's a really great gig. You know, it, it, this is awesome to be part of such a big company. Evergreen in particular is a very big podcast company located in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, they've been around for quite a while and their current shows are just phenomenal. Uh, so mm. being able to have the chance to not only join Killer Podcasts, their sister podcast company, uh, but to be the one of the flagship shows to launch it this October, this month, uh, within just another week or so, uh, is it, really, really cool. And we're super excited to, to tell you guys about that. Now, there are a couple of things that are going to change, though, in regard to that. And in part, it might be where you're going to find us. Uh, because if I'm not mistaken, we are no longer going to be on YouTube for the time being. Uh, right. That's going to change. Um, also on Spreaker. You will, also on Spreaker. We'll no longer be on Spreaker as well. Uh, our platform is changing. Uh, so whenever you guys want to reach out or listen to us, I should say, uh, you know, you can still find us on any of the big names, Apple, uh, you know, all, all those big places, uh, Podbean, uh, but we're Spotify. Going to, Spotify, yeah, uh, but we are going to be directly connected with Evergreen Podcasts, and that's where you're going to be able to jump on there and type in our name and find us to listen to shows from uh, our episodes from there. Or, of course, you can always go to our website, paratruth.com, and all of our new shows are right there on the front page. The first six episodes uh, that you see will be the latest and greatest, uh, but you'll also have access to all of the other 270 plus episodes. Crazy to think about. That's a lot of episodes if you're just joining us. So good luck. Start catching up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think it's, this is this is a fun endeavor. This is something that we've been really hoping for for a long time and working toward. And now that we have this opportunity, uh, we're excited to 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 jump on it and uh, share it with you guys. Well, and the, the cool thing about this is both Eric and myself have been a part of different networks throughout our time as podcasters. Um, I'm speaking only for myself. Eric, you can voice your opinion, but Evergreen has welcomed us with open arms, made us feel like we're part of the family. So when it came time to sign that contract, honestly, I mean, of course we went through with a fine tooth comb, but I felt great about signing the contract with them. Sure. Oh yeah. And I completely agree. And you know, it's, this isn't one of those things where uh, Justin and I just like, Oh, somebody's reaching out to us to, to join this network. That's boom, sign it. No, we painstakingly like raked through every pos like every detail, all the cons, all, you know, all the pros, everything uh, really weighed the decision before we, we finally went ahead and signed the contract, you know? Uh, right. So I, I think the, the, the best thing about this is it's not only good for us and our show, 
but it's great for you guys because you're going to have more access to not our only not only our show, but more things that we want to bring to you, such as the blogs, such as videos in the future, uh, documentaries that we're going to be working on, things like that uh, is all going to be able to be combined into this one format uh, on this podcast website, uh, specifically parachute.com. Uh, and of course, you're going to have access to so many other paranormal podcasts that we will be uh, working with along the way. So that's one thing you'll notice right away. You'll be hearing more commercials, not more, not to say, you know, we're not going to be deleting portions of our show and minimizing it and right. room for <laughs> commercials. Don't worry about that. But we do have, you know, our, our spots are going to be consisting of other paranormal shows that you guys might be interested in. So it's not like, oh, hey come here for us only this is a family unit so you guys will have the opportunity to learn about other podcasts you might also enjoy right and uh speaking of the website i, I did forget to mention that you can we do have a direct link to our t public page as well mm -hmm. uh, with all of our merch on that um we are diligently working on i, I should say eric is diligently working on uh getting new paramixologies done because when he was here in june um we did a couple of episodes we're going to do more while we're in kentucky mm -hmm. um so the youtube channel is going to be specifically for the paramixologies if we do any type of videos specifically for the show itself that's where you'll find them and it will directly link to the website as well um so if you're going to be at Scarefest, come check us out. Uh, we'll be just kind of walking around with our Paratruth shirts on. And if you see us, come say hi. We would love to talk to you. Any other things you can think of, Eric? Uh, no, I just hope everybody is really enjoying the spooky season thus far. I know here in Northeast Ohio, my tree is changing colors, which I'm excited about and also a little sad about. Because we know what happens, you know. <laughs> yeah. I get depressed during the winter, you know, but we're, I'm excited for it. I, I hope everyone else is really enjoying this time of year as well. I think we have some really cool stuff to look forward to uh, in the very near future. So, uh, also, we are going to, if you guys haven't noticed, we're going to become uh, more active on all of our social media accounts Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm actually changing my Twitter and Instagram account uh, so that. I am directly uh, connected to Paratruth. It's not a separate account away from there. So you guys will be able to find Justin and I separately. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, we look forward to everything that's about to be coming next week. We have a guest. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's Jamie Jaronis. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, he wrote uh, Llewellyn's little book of the day of the dead, which is, fittingly appropriate because we are coming very close to the day of the dead um so very excited about that as well uh we were excited about shauna stoker as well but uh keeping with the creepy theme i think this will be a nice uh in inset into our october and then right after that episode or the next week sorry uh will be scarefest so we will be doing some type of episode whether that's a live episode or uh, we'll be doing maybe just some interviews and include them in our episode. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for that as well. Yeah. So until then, uh, as always, my name is Eric. It's not going to change. I don't think. <laughs> and I'm Paratruth Justin. Peace.